we've been dealing with nine steps to receiving the mercies of God. And prayerfully, you've been catching on to the steps that we've been walking through. I may have been blessed by these nine steps these last few weeks. Uh, step one dealt with if my people, which is a reminder to all of us that we are God's people. It's sad sometimes, but God has to remind us that we are his people, that we belong to him. Uh, touch yourself and say, I belong to God. What a wonderful thing to know that we belong to God, which means if we belong to him, God has to take care of us. God has to watch over us. God has to provide for us. And then uh, we found when he said, who are called by my name, that lets us know that we are God and God is us. And because we belong to him, there's a responsibility that comes with belonging to God. That means we have to act like God. We have to think like God. We have to talk like God. We have to be like God. And sometimes that can be challenging because we don't want to be like him. We, 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 we want the benefits of being of God, but we don't want to be like God. But, but when you are called by his name, he's put his stamp of approval on you, which means that he's going to expect more of you. One of the things that I was sharing with the leadership over the last couple of weeks when we had meetings is next year, 2015, God's going to expect greater out of each and every one of us if we're going to expect greater blessings and greater favor we need to God's going to expect greater behavior he's going to expect greater attitudes he's going to expect greater of us if we're going to expect greater of him and, and so so we we understand that we are called by his name and then then it goes on to say if they will humble themselves and and basically what that means is we have to humble ourselves means we have to say God I can't do this without you. How many know you can't do this thing called life without God? There's absolutely nothing you can do without God. The word of God says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that recognizes and help us to understand that we've got to have God in our lives. If you don't have God in your life, then you're not a humble person. If you're trying to fix things on your own, you're not being humble. If you think you got all the answers, you are not being humble before God. But then he goes on to say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and then says and pray somebody say pray if we are God's people we need to pray to God if we are God's people we need to talk to God if we are God's people who are called by his name he ought to be able to talk to us prayer isn't just about you talking to him it's also about him talking to you and we have to avail and open ourselves so that God can speak to us because God has a plan and a purpose for our life but we have to be in tune with him in order to know what that plan and purpose is. But then he goes on to say and pray and seek my face. And, and what we learned about seeking the face of God is, is God and our relationship with him has to be the most important thing in our lives. God says, I'll have no other God before me. We put a lot of little G.O.D.s in our life. We allow our jobs to be God's. We allow our cars and our houses to be God's. We allow our friends to be God's. We allow the person that we say we in love with to be our God and we better be careful because God says if you love anything or anybody more than me you got problems and I'm here to tell you anything you put before God is going to eventually let you down if you put your money before God that money going to make you going to make you regret you ever did that if you put anything before God it will sooner or later disappoint you but there's one that I know that will never leave me nor forsake me and that's God in heaven oh my God maybe I'm just the only one getting excited about that but, but then we learn that we need to turn from our wicked ways and what's funny is, is this text isn't talking to the sinner it's talking to the believer God isn't talking to the one that hasn't given his life to Christ he's talking to the one that says God I believe you are my Lord well God says if you my people and if you're called by my name I need you my people to turn from your wicked ways see the problem with some of us is is we want to have our cake and eat it too we want to be out in the world and do what we want to do but we also want the benefits of being God's child God says you need to make up your mind what you want to do are you going to be with me or are you going to be against me because if you're with the world you're against God 
And then, then last week, we truly got blessed by the man of God, Apostle Huey from Voice of Faith North. He truly came in here and he blessed us when he said, then he taught on, then I will hear from heaven. If you weren't here, you missed a mighty powerful word. You missed a move of God because the man of God came in here and taught us and helped us to understand that when we do our part, when we humble ourselves, when we pray, when we seek the face of God, when we turn from our wicked ways, then God will then give us attention. I shudder to think that God may be covering his ears to the prayers that I've been sending up to him. It scares me that God may not be listening to what I've been asking him for because I may be doing some things that may not be pleasing in his sight. I don't want to get to heaven and say and have God tell me I missed out on some stuff I could have had right here on earth because I did not do what was asked of me. And so, so we learn that God will hear from heaven. And then it leads us to today's step. It leads us to today's step because in step eight, he says, and forgive their sins. Somebody say forgive. forgive. Now notice the order of God. The, the order of God is this. Forgiveness doesn't come before we've humbled ourselves. See, see, you won't ask for forgiveness if you always think you're right. Hmm. Uh, forgiveness won't come if God, to, from God if we don't pray. You got to ask to be forgiven. Uh, forgiveness won't come if we don't seek a true and real relationship with God. There's some folks that are phony around you and there's some folks that are phony around God. They, they don't really want to be in a true relationship with God. They just want to get close enough to get some benefits from God. Well, well, God said, I'm seeking some folks that want a real relationship with me, that if no matter what happens in their life, they, will, they won't leave me because I won't leave them. So, so forgiveness doesn't come until you have that real relationship with God. For forgiveness doesn't come, notice now, until we've turned from our wicked ways. You, you can't keep asking for forgiveness and keep doing the same old stuff. God, God says, I need to see an about face. I, I need to see somebody turn Turn from the stuff that you're doing in order to get the forgiveness that you're expecting of me. But before God renders forgiveness, you also, the word of God says, then he will hear from heaven. Notice God won't even hear you unless you've got those other things done. He, he won't even hear what you're trying to say if you're still doing some stuff you aren't supposed to be doing. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people, somebody say my people, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Can, can I pause for a second? Notice it, he doesn't use the word but. He uses the word and, which means he joins all these conditions together, which is an expectation of us, his people. If God, if God, if we are God and we are the people that are supposed to be serving God, it says, if my people who are called by my name will do what? Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Notice we have to do all those things. Then it says, then I'll hear from heaven. <laughs> and then it says, and forgive their sin. Oh my God. Uh, let's say talk about sin for a minute because that's a three letter word that many people don't want to talk about. Uh, a sin is sometimes the, the subject that we want to skip over when it comes to God because we, we want just the good stuff from God. We, we, we don't want to talk about the consequences of sin. We don't want to talk about what sin is. And I'm going to spend a whole month on sin in the month of, in the year 2015 because we need to understand sin will separate you from God. Sin has a way of tearing your relationship up with God. When you sin, basically sin is disobedience to the will of God. Sin is either doing what is forbidden or failing to do what is required. See, see there's one thing we got to know about sin. Sin is sin. That there is no one sin greater than another. It's sin, as God sees it, is sin. If you if you're not living right, you're just not living right. And, and if you if you're doing things you aren't supposed to be doing, you're just doing things you aren't supposed to be doing. Sin is sin. We like to categorize as people what kind of sin is better. Well, well God will be a little bit more lenient with me than He will with. No, sin is sin in God's eyes. And so so you're either doing what you're supposed to do or you're not doing what you're supposed to do. There are some folks that are living in disobedience and. That's just as dangerous with God as it is if you were going around murdering somebody. 
See, if you're going around sleeping around and you are married, that, that, that's just as bad as if, you, if you're declaring that God isn't God in your life. Sin is sin. Hmm. So, so the word sin is something that we need to deal with sometimes because we, want to, we think we can do whatever we want to do and still get the benefits of God. But sin destroys relationships. Uh, what does God mean, though, when he says he will forgive our sin? Uh, God has promised that he's going to spare us from the consequences of sin. That's a reason to shout all by yourself. Uh, go with me to Romans 6.23 because I don't know about anybody else. When I read this, I, I've read this text over and over over the years, and yet something jumped out of it from me. Romans 6.23, something jumped out of this text that, that made me want to shout. Uh, Romans 6.23 says, the, for the wages of sin is death. Hmm. I'll read that again. For, for the wages of sin is death. <laughs> if we were to be held accountable for the sin that we've done, we would surely die. Hmm. It says, for the wages of sin is death. <laughs> but, but then I began to shout because it says, for the wages of sin is death, but... Uh, I got excited when I saw that word, but y'all know I get excited when I see that word, but because we know that, but is a conjunction that joins two conditions together, but whatever said before the word, but gets negated by what said afterward, but it says for the wages of sin is death. Somebody say, but, <laughs> but uh, the gift of God, you know, we deserve every consequence of sin. We deserve. Justice says we should get what we deserve. Hmm. But grace jumps in and puts a butt after for the wages of sin is death. I should deserve to go to hell for what I've done. But God said, I, I got another plan for your life. I, I should die for the sins that I committed. But God loved me that he put a butt after the wages of sin. Am I the only one excited about the fact that God put a butt after for the wages of sin is death? Am I the only one excited about the fact that God thought enough of me to put a butt after the wages of sin? I could have been going to hell right now, but God put a butt after what I did. Instead of going to hell, I can be going to heaven. Instead of dealing with eternal death, I'm dealing with eternal life. Am I the only one thanking God right now because of what he's done in my life? Oh, well, maybe you ain't done nothing. Maybe you've been perfect all your life, but I know I done done a couple things or two in my life. I know I done made some mistakes along the way. I know I done said some stuff I shouldn't have said, done some stuff I shouldn't have done. So I thank God for the butt. I thank God because he thought enough of me that when I was 19, 20, and 21, I was still acting a fool. But God said, but I got a better plan for you. I remember when my daughter was running the street, doing this and doing that, but I got another purpose for her life. I remember when my son was running up and down the street with his homeboys, but I got another plan for him. I remember when my sons and my daughters used to stay in the club till four or five o'clock in the morning, but I got another plan for them. Now I'm going to wake them up at four in the morning and get them into church so that they can praise my holy name. I remember when my sons and daughters used to cuss and talk all kinds of mess about people, but now I got them talking about the word of God and his will for my life. I'm excited about the but in my life. Oh my God. Uh, but, but it goes on to say, but the gift of God, oh my God, forgiveness is a gift from God. <laughs> you can't praise your way to forgiveness. <laughs> if that was the case, we'd all be up in here praising him. You can't give your way to forgiveness. Because if that was the case, folks would be dropping million dollar tithes and offering. You can't do, come to church and just think that's enough to get forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift from God. You can't do anything to deserve it or earn it. You can't do anything to qualify for it. It was freely given to each and every one of us. That's another reason to thank God right there. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. 
I've got access to eternal life because of what God did in my life. I get to hope for heaven instead of hoping for hell because of the blood that was shed on Calvary. Go back to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, because it says, if my people who, who are called by my name will, will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they will seek my face, if they will turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin. To forgive is to grant pardon for or remission of a debt or an offense. To forgive is to give up all claim on an account. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had anything forgiven in your life. <laughs> to forgive is to cease to feel resentment against. You often hear people ask the question, how do you know when you've truly forgiven somebody? Well, the answer is, is when you can, when you don't no longer have the resentment that you have toward that person. If I, if I can look at you and I know what you did to me and I, and I not still get angry when, if my blood don't boil anymore like it used to. If I can, if I can sit at the table knowing you used to talk bad about me and still sit at the table in the presence of my enemies and know it's going it's gonna to be all right and I can digest my food. I, I know I've forgiven you when, when, when I can look at you and I don't get mad at, at the thought of you. If I can, if I can be in your presence and still open up my mouth and speak a good word and say hello to you. See, see, some folks you're carrying so much unforgiveness it's, it's even hard to open up your mouth and speak to a person. Well, well God says, yeah, I wish, and y'all better be thankful I'm not like y'all sometimes because if God was like some of us we'd all be messed up. I, I thank God that, that he loves us enough that he doesn't hold against us the stuff that we used to do. I thank God that he loves us enough that he was able to be able to cease to be angry with us. He'll still talk to us. He'll still want the very best for us. <laughs> That's forgiveness. So it says here, to forgive is to stop blaming someone. To cancel an indebtedness or a liability. To forgive also means to lift the heavy load. You know, sin is a heavy load. <laughs> the burden of sin will hold you back. It, it will rob you of your joy. The, the moment God removes sin from you is the moment that you are released from the burden of sin. God is always looking and seeking to forgive us of us. That's the interesting part. God wants to forgive you of your sin. But you got to be willing to go to God and ask for it. God wants to pardon you from all that you and I have done, but we have to be willing. We got to be humble enough to say, God, I messed up. That's why we got to confess our sin. That's why we got to open up our mouth and agree with God that what was done was wrong. And God is eagerly waiting to agree with you so that he can wipe your slate clean. How many want some slates cleaned in your life? <laughs> Uh, but, but what happens oftentimes with believers is, is, is we, we allow sin to mess us up and separate us from God. And when we get separated from God, the burden of sin begins to weigh us down and, and it begins to rob us of the joy of the Lord. How many want the joy of the Lord in your life? Uh, Psalm 66 and 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Sometimes sin, if you allow it to, will rob you of the joy to worship and you you know those folks and maybe it was you at a time when you knew you did something wrong oftentimes you didn't even want to go to church because you said in your mind God don't want to deal with me right now I feel like a hypocrite walking up in the house of God trying to praise and worship God knowing I did some stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing but the first place you ought to be running to is the house of God when you've messed up the first place you ought to run to is God so that you can get the forgiveness of your sin. What I love about Jesus was, is when he, when he was being tested, he said, I didn't, because you don't send a doctor to somebody that's well. You send a doctor to somebody that's sick. Can God tell somebody, the church is nothing but a big fat hospital waiting on a bunch of sick folks to come in here. 
here. And when you come up in here, God is looking for you to say, God, I'm messed up. God, I need you to help me. God, I'm not thinking right. God, I'm not feeling right. God, I'm not talking right. And God says, when you come into the house of God and admit you're messed up, that's when my blood of Jesus Christ can be washed over you. That's when I can start cleansing you of all unrighteousness. That's when I can start clearing your mind, freeing your heart. That's when I can take that burden off of you. The word of God says, cast your care upon him because he cares for us. How many want the joy restored back in your life? You got to be willing to say, God, I need you to do it in my life. Go with me to Romans 8, verse number one. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm excited about the fact that God has forgiven me of my sin. Romans 8, verse one says, there is therefore now, somebody shout now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Can God help somebody right here? Sin has a way of condemning you. Sin has a way of making you feel like you're not worthy of God's goodness. Sin has a way of making you hold your head down, feeling like guilty, reminding yourself of all the stuff that you did. But the word of God says, there is therefore now no condemnation. So when you go to God and you ask for forgiveness, God says, when I wipe your slate clean, you can get rid of the condemnation because God says, once I've forgiven you, I've forgotten about it. Oh, can I praise God? God on that all alone. The fact that when God forgives you, he forgets about it at that moment. He separates you from the sin. He throws it as far to the west and as far as to the east. He removes it so far from you that he doesn't even remember that you did it. That's why you can walk around feeling good about what God has done for you because you don't have the condemnation of sin on your life. Can we give God some praise for the fact that we can worship when no condemnation I can praise with no condemnation I can pray with no condemnation I can give God glory with no condemnation I can talk about the goodness of God with no condemnation I don't have to drag around condemnation I can free myself of that burden knowing that I'm free to worship God give God some praise up in this place so 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 sin will rob you of your ability to worship but it also rob you of your ability to walk in God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. But, but what sin has a tendency to do is sin has a way of reminding us of what we've done. See, the, the problem with some of us is, is uh, we, we, we got too good of a memory. Hmm. See, 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 once God has forgiven you, he's forgotten about it. Once God has forgiven you, he, he's thrown it away from you. But we have a tendency of reminding God of what we've done. <laughs> what that says to God is, is my forgiveness, God, matters than yours. Hmm, we got to be careful with that. See, 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 if God has forgiven me, I ought to forgive myself. Hmm, who's God talking to? If God has released me, I ought to release myself. Hmm. If God has cast it away, I ought to cast it away from myself. So we got to stop going to God and say, God, I know I messed up. God, 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 I know I did wrong before you. If God has said you're set free, then you're set free. Those whom the Son has freed is free indeed. So it says we walk by faith, not by sight. God, God just wants somebody to understand right now. Forgive yourself and start walking in the newness of God. <laughs> Those who are free are free indeed. Which means you're free to walk in the promises that God has made you. And we got to start walking in faith, knowing that God truly is prepared and ready to take us to that next level in our life. But sin, but sin, but sin will rob you of your ability to, to worship, but it rob you of your ability to walk in God. It also rob you of your ability to witness. <laughs> you know, when you messed up, the last thing you want to talk about is, is God. Because you think God's still mad at you. Y'all hey, know how kids are. 
when they, they, when they know they done something wrong, they don't even want to be around you, do they? And then when you call their name, they just, they real slow coming to you. Uh, God, 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 God said, that's how you are. <laughs> well, when you know you've done something wrong and I'm uh, calling your name, you go hide in yourself. That's what Adam and Eve did. <laughs> well, well, they knew they did something wrong because or else they wouldn't have hid themselves. They knew they did something out of disobedience or they wouldn't have felt that they were naked because God had to ask them, who told you you were naked? See, see, see God has to remind us sometimes that, that the only one that can restore us is him. So, so, so we got to know that even when we sin and if God forgives us, he gives us the ability to witness about his goodness. The fact that he has forgiven us is a witnessing tool all by itself. I can talk about what God has blessed me with. I can talk about how God has made a way out of no way. I can talk about how God has healed my body. But one of the best testimonies I can give is the fact that God has forgiven me of the sin that I was in. One of the best testimonies I can tell somebody is, is even though I was messed up, caught up in sin God loved me enough that while I was yet a sinner he died on the cross for me one of the best witnesses I got is the fact that I could tell somebody if he changed a wretch like me he can change somebody like you if he can change the way I talk he can change the way you talk if he can change my focus he can surely change your focus am I the only one excited about the fact that I can be a witness for Christ oh my God Hebrews 12 1 says therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us many of us don't want to run because we keep reminding ourselves of the stuff we did <laughs> Many of us won't pursue the things of God because we're holding down ourselves with the way to say, y'all remember back in the 80s, I, I don't know, maybe I'm dating myself, I'm telling myself, but back in the 80s, there used to be these little ankle weights you used to put around your leg. You, you would strap them with Velcro around your ankles and, and you would walk around and carry on about your day and, and the point of the ankle weights was to build your leg muscles. <laughs> some of the craziest stuff that we used to do back in the day. Uh, but those ankle weights would add weight to you, but as you were walking, it was supposed to give you strength. Well, God wants somebody to know, I don't know about anybody else, but I used to walk around with those ankle weights, and, and when I would take them off, it felt like I could run faster. It, it felt like I, I, was, I was quicker than I, than I was when I had them on. That's what sin is. is it, sin has a way of weighing you down and slowing you up. God says, I'm trying to get you somewhere, but, but you got the way to sin hold on to you. If you would just release yourself, because I've already released you. If you would just free yourself, you'll discover you got enough energy. You got enough weight off of you to run the race that I put before you. But Acts 1 and 8, Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Good God Almighty. The fact that I've been forgiven makes me a witness. And here's the power about being a witness. Don't tell nobody else's story but yours. <laughs> God said, I've done enough in your life that your story can help somebody in their life. Don't go tell him what it's so-and-so God did in so-and-so's life. Tell what God did in your life. Tell somebody about the change that he made for you. Tell them how he turned you around. <laughs> Tell them how he put you on solid ground. Tell them how, how God changed your mind. Tell folks how God changed your heart. Tell folks how God made you a better person. So, so, so it says, if my people, somebody say my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my 
face and, and turn from their wicked ways. And then it says, then I will hear from heaven. Uh, God, God gave me this demonstration to kind of help clarify what it means. As you can see in front of you, you got two different chairs. You got one chair draped in black and you got one chair draped in white. And, and what happens with us is we all start in this chair. I'll pull up first Peter 2 and 9 we all start in this chair and if we're not careful this chair represents sin and sin if you are not careful can start getting comfortable uh, when I was out in the world I was comfortable in my sin uh, I remember when we talked about this in Bible study sin can feel good sin can feel comfortable because you like it and, and if you're careful you'll start leaning back in sin you, you'll start laying down in sin if you're careful sin can engulf you so much that you'll actually start enjoying what you're doing not realizing that the wages of sin is death you're going to hell but because it feels so good you even wrap yourself in it good God Almighty because that's how sin does it it gets to feeling good and you don't want to let it go but, but, but what I think about sin the word of God says for the wages of sin is death uh, can God minister to somebody I don't know if you've ever owed anybody a debt uh, what tends to happen is if you owe somebody a debt and you haven't paid it, they'll send or have a debt collector call you. Uh, interesting thing about debt collectors is this. Uh, they don't care what you're doing. They'll call you at any time of the day. They don't care if you're sitting at home watching your favorite TV show. They don't care if you're sitting at the dinner table eating dinner with your family. They will call you because guess what? You owe a debt and they're going to collect on that debt. How many know that the enemy tried to collect a debt on you? He tried to collect the debt and the debt was the sin that you were in. But the debt that you had to pay was death. But, but God had a better plan for you. Good God Almighty. And if you've ever owed anybody money and the phone would ring, I don't know about you, but there were times that I wouldn't even want to answer the phone. I know who it is and I know what they want. But I refuse to answer the phone because I understand they want me to pay that debt. But God wants you to know that he's been trying to call you from heaven. And you haven't been answering his call. He's been trying to call you from heaven. But you think it's the debt collector coming to, to collect the debt on you. But what God wants you to know is I'm trying to call you to let you know that your debt has been paid. Good God Almighty. But while you're even in sin, something starts to happen. I don't know, maybe it's me, but even when I was in sin, Dick and Jackson, I began to not like it like I used to like it. The, the, the stuff I used to like drinking, I started losing my taste for it. The, the stuff I used to do, I started to not want to do anymore. The, the boys I used to hang with, I, I started not to want to hang with them anymore. But, but I began to get frustrated and I would throw my hands up. Because I don't understand why I'm feeling the way I do. Can God help somebody? Sometimes, God, when you're in this state right here, God says you're right where I want you. Because sometimes, God's got to snatch you out of your sin. Good God Almighty. I love that because if you know anything about Lot and his life and his wife and his children, the word of God says in Genesis 19 that they literally had to snatch them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. The word of God says that the men of God laid hold of their hands. They literally pulled them out of the sin that they were in. But what I love about God is he wasn't done yet. After he snatches you out of sin, the word of God says that he loves you enough that he will place you in his marvelous light. Good God Almighty. Now what I used to focus on, I'm not focusing on anymore. Now what I used to be comfortable in, I'm not comfortable in anymore. Now what I used to want to do, I don't want to do anymore. I noticed I've lost some friends along the way, but I got some new friends. I noticed that the things I used to enjoy, I don't enjoy anymore. And then what's interesting is this. I don't miss what I used to do. <laughs> I don't miss who I used to hang with. 
<laughs> and all of a sudden, what I used to be comfortable in, I'm no longer comfortable in. Now, this righteousness feels kind of good. <laughs> this holiness ain't a bad thing. <laughs> The goodness of God is all right. Let me let me lean back in here. <laughs> because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me recline back in his love. <laughs> because now I recognize God loves me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Let me lean back in his peace. <laughs> his peace that surpasses all understanding. Let me get comfortable in his joy. <laughs> because if God gives me joy, the world can't take it from him. What I used to enjoy, I don't enjoy no more. Now I'm enjoying the righteousness and the goodness of God. Give God some praise. Uh, First Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Good God. A, a holy nation. His own special people. If my people who are called by my name. But then it goes on to say, it goes on to say that if we are his special treasure, good God Almighty, if we are his holy people notice now that we get to proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light god is calling us he's calling us from heaven saying son daughter you're no longer bound by sin son, daughter, you are now free from the condemnation of sin. Son, daughter, you no longer are bound by the sin that you were in. I want to hear your praises because now I placed you in my marvelous life. That's why you look differently to the people that you used to hang with. <laughs> I don't know what y'all mean. I, I, my, my, my first response used to be, well, you know, I have gained a little weight, but I still look the same. Uh, it ain't about how you look. Yeah. It ain't about what's on the outside. It's what's happening in the inside. Yeah. Yeah. I can't put my finger on it, but something's different about you. God said, I'm trying to show my light in your life now. See, they used to see in the darkness, but now they see in the light. Good God Almighty. <laughs> If my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And, good God Almighty, forgive their sin. Yes, yes. You have been forgiven. Thank you. You Thank have been forgiven. Thank you, oh, that needs to be said. You have been forgiven. Good. Uh, you have been forgiven. Mm. You have been forgiven. Uh, you have been forgiven. And if God is forgiving you, <laughs> I, I'm going to get wrong. If, if God is forgiving you, to hell with anybody that keeps reminding you of what you did. Because <laughs> if he's forgiving you, and he won't bring it up. Don't let nobody else bring it up. If he's freed you from it, don't let nobody else bind you up with it. I could care less what people think about what I used to be. I used to be that. I'm not that anymore. And if you caught up with reminding me of what I used to be, then guess what? I just won't hang with you no more. Because I've been forgiven. And I've been freed. And I'm free to worship. 
I'm free to be who God says I am. I'm free to have what God says I can have. I'm free to walk the way God says I should walk. I'm free to do the things that God says I can do. Because I'm free from sin, I'm free to have everything God says is mine. If my people who are called by my name, yes, sir. Yes, sir. if they will humble themselves, if my people will pray, if my people will turn from their wicked ways, if they will seek my face, God says, then I'll turn my ear to you yes, sir. and I'll forgive you yeah, 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 yeah. of your sin. Hey, yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I thank God Hallelujah. that he's a forgiving God. Yeah. Let's give God some praise in this place. Amen. Oh, come on, let's give God some glory in this place. Yeah. The doors of the church are open.